Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. India on Tuesday confirmed that British lawmaker Debbie Abrahams, who was denied entry into the country on Monday, did not hold a valid visa. This was after various media organizations claimed that Abrahams was deported. Government sources stated that the e-business visa of Abrahams was revoked on the 14th of February. They further said the cancellation was also conveyed to her the very same day. Now, sources in the Ministry of External Affairs also responded to the concerns raised by the British lawmaker as to why she was not allowed to visit her family and friends in India. Today, In Depth looks at the reasons as to why the British lawmaker was denied entry into the country. We also look at the larger issue of deportations in India as well as in several other countries. The requirements foreigners need to fulfill during their stay in India and the circumstances under which they can be refused permission to enter the country. Debbie Abrahams, British Member of Parliament and Chairperson of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Kashmir, was refused permission to enter India on Monday. She stated that she was denied entry despite having a year-long valid e-business visa issued to her in October 2019. However, government officials say her e-business visa was revoked last week and she had been advised to apply for a regular one, which she did not. In the absence of a valid visa, she was requested to leave the country. More details on what the government has said on the issue in this report. A day after British lawmaker Debbie Abrahams was denied entry into India, the Ministry of External Affairs clarified on Tuesday that she was not in possession of a valid visa. The Indian High Commission in the UK informed that the Labour MP did not hold a valid visa at the time of her travel to India and she was accordingly requested to return. According to government sources, Debbie Abrahams was issued an e-business visa on 7th October 2019 valid till 5th of October 2020 to attend business meetings. However, it was revoked on 14th of February 2020 on account of her indulging in activities that went against India's national interest. Stipulate that every country will have to get a visa to enter another foreign country. Now, uh, Deportation can only take place after a country has been allowed, after a person has been allowed to come in into the country and then uh, there is a violation. But if a person is refused entry because either a visa has not been granted or a visa is refused at the, um, on arrival or there has been a visa which has been issued earlier which has been cancelled. So, in which case the person does not come with a valid visa and can be refused entry. So, that is distinctly different from deportation. The rejection of the e-business visa was intimated to her the same day and she was advised to apply for a regular one. Government sources assert that the grant, rejection or revocation of a visa or electronic travel authorization is the sovereign right of a country. Besides, sources in the MEA also contend that in any case, previously issued e-business visa meant for business meetings cannot be used for visiting family and friends as claimed by the British MP. It is not permitted as per the rules and a separate visa request has to be made. Further, there is no provision of visa on arrival for UK nationals coming to India. In this case, it is the sovereign right of every state to either permit, allow or not to permit any individual to come in. You know, the current instance of uh, Debbie Abrams, the Labour, uh, UK Labour MP who came here, she did not have a visa or her visa that she had applied for the e-visa that was cancelled and she was informed about it in, well in advance. So I think for her to expect that she would be allowed to come in, I think that was, uh, you know, trying to push her way through. Debbie Abrahams, who is an opposition Labour Party MP and chair of the all-party parliamentary group on Kashmir, had claimed on Monday that she was travelling on a valid e-visa to India to visit family and friends, but her visa was revoked without any explanation. 
She had also questioned why her visa was suddenly revoked and also the possibility of a visa on arrival, something India does not offer. The British MP also claimed to have not received any emails before the 13th of February regarding her e-visa being revoked, after which she says she had been travelling and was away from office. Her office in the UK also claimed that she was put on a plane to Dubai last week, which is where she flew into Delhi from earlier on Monday. She is in uh, cohort with uh, the uh, Pakistan ISI uh, Inter-Services Intelligence. She's been working against the interest of India. She's been, she's the chair of the inter-party group on Kashmir. She has been making uh, very adverse remarks against India uh, after the abrogation of Article 370. So I think uh, there must have been uh, several reasons on the basis of which her e-visa was not granted or was cancelled. As she was not in possession of a valid visa, she was sent back to Dubai. Debbie Abrahams was among a group of MPs who had issued formal letters following the revocation of Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir in August last year, urging the UK government and the European Union to build pressure on India on the issue. India has reiterated on various international forums that the decision on Article 370 is an internal matter of the country that has been endorsed by Parliament. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Once a person is diffused entry into a country, now they are liable to be deported by the immigration authorities. The preferred technical term, however, is removal. There are several circumstances under which immigration authorities can enforce someone's departure from the country. In our next report, we talk about some India-specific laws and also some scenarios under which they take effect. Deportation is the most important form of immigration enforcement. It comes into play when a foreigner is not allowed to stay in a country. It is however possible only on few grounds of respective countries' immigration rules. The term expulsion is also used as a synonym for deportation. Although expulsion is more often used in the context of international law. In India, the acts dealing with entry, stay and exit of foreigner nationals in the country are Passport Entry into India Act 1920. It prescribes specific authorization of foreigner nationals on their valid travel documents or passports for allowing entry into the country. Under this act and the rules made thereunder, the foreigners coming to India are required to get a visa from Indian missions or posts. Foreigners Act 1946 that regulates the entry of foreigners into India, their presence therein and their departure therefrom. Registration of Foreigners Act 1939 that mandates that certain categories of the Registration of Foreigners Rule 1992, foreigners whose intended stay in India is more than the specified period or as provided in their visa authorization, are required to get themselves registered with the registration officer. Deportation is a technical expression which is used uh, for people who have already of another country who have entered a particular country. Suppose, uh, you know, Vijay Malia who's, or somebody of that kind who is an Indian passport holder goes to another country and then the mother country wants that citizen back or he has committed or she has committed some crime in the, in the host country, foreign country. And then that government feels that it is not proper to um, let that person continue in the foreign country. So then deportation comes in. Leave to enter a country is refused if the civil authority in India is satisfied that the foreigner is not in possession of a valid passport or visa for India or has not been exempted from the possession of a passport or visa. He or she is a person of unsound mind or a mentally defective person. 
they are suffering from a loathsome or infectious disease in consequence of which in the opinion of the medical officer of the port or the place of entry as the case may be the entry of the foreigner is likely to prejudice public health he has been sentenced in a foreign country for an extradition offence within the meaning of the indian extradition act 1903 His entry is prohibited either under an order issued by a competent authority or under the specific orders of the central government. Deportation can be for illegal immigrants, can be for immigrants who are uh, overstaying their visa, and the third condition is if they are within the visa uh, period but they have committed some activity or uh, done something which is inimical to the interests of the host country government in which case the country can decide to deport that person there are also certain requirements that are required for foreigners in india to begin with an immigration check is carried out for all the passengers at the port of arrival in india this includes checking of passport visa disembarkation card entering foreigners particulars in computer retention of arrival card and stamping of passport Foreigners arriving in India are required to furnish true particulars and credentials in the arrival card. Pakistan nationals other than those on diplomatic visa, non-diplomatic visa, SARC visa exemption sticker and SAU visa are required to carry a visa application form issued in addition to the regular visa on their passport by the Indian mission. On presentation at immigration check post they are issued a regular residential permit and are required to report to the FRRO or FRO or concerned police station in their places of stay within 24 hours unless they are officially exempted from police reporting with inputs from Vipul Agarwal bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Time for a short break here on the program we'll be right back to stay with us देखिए विशेष मेरे साथ आज शाम साढ़े सात बजे सिर्फ राज्यसभा टीवी पर टेल्स दैट इंस्पायर स्टोरीज ऑफ सोशल चेंज सल्यूट टू डाइवर्सिटी प्रमोटिंग पब्लिक डिस्कोर्स events that motivate inspiring the innovative spirit watch rajya sabha television documentaries Welcome back you're watching in depth definitions of deportation apply equally to nationals as well as foreigners people may be deported from a country for several reasons for example one may be deported from a country if he or she has got into the country illegally or without a visa that is the required permission in our next report we talk about the various types of deportations Deportation is the expulsion of a person on a group of people from a place or country. It can be done by a foreign country when a foreigner violates the immigration laws of that country. Definitions of deportation apply equally to nationals and foreigners. Deportation was done on political criminals, but in time it became a means of removing those who have become an objects of suspicion. deportation basically is provided for in section 9 of the foreigners act 1946 and it applies to uh, um, basically people who have entered a country illegally or who have overstayed their visa so that is the technical uh, uh, parameters within which deportation station is considered 
There are various types of deportation and each country has its own deportation laws. For example, external deportation is when all countries reserve the right to deport persons without right to abort even those who are long-time residents or possess permanent residency. In general, foreigners who have committed serious crimes, entered the country illegally, overstayed or broken the conditions of their visa or otherwise lost their legal status to remain in the country, may be administratively removed or deported. In some cases, even citizens can be deported if they have another nationality or if they acquire citizenship through fraud. Another type is internal deportation, means deportation can also happen within a state. When, for example, an individual or a group of people is forcibly resettled to a different part of the country, the rationale is often that these groups might assist the enemy in war or insurrection. Colonial deportations refer to removal of individuals to an overseas colony. For example, from 1717, Britain deported around 40,000 religious objectors and criminals to America before the practice ceased in 1976. Jailers sold the criminals to shipping contractors who then sold them to plantation owners. The criminal was forced to work for the plantation owner for the duration of their sentence. Under criminal deportation, an individual is deported or physically removed from a country by reason of such individual's criminal conduct. ...to deportation under different circumstances. But if we were to look, because deportations can take place in peace times, deportations can take place during time of conflict or war, but if we were to look at uh, deportations that have taken place in peace times, then I think it would be the United States which has really resorted to largest number of deportations. Because even from uh, 2009 to 2016, if I remember correctly, more than 3.2 million people were deported, deported from their country. Basically, it is if people are coming into your country illegally, without a valid uh, entry permission or an entry document, without a valid visa, then you have the right to uh, deport them. Over the last six years, some cases of deportations acquired prominence. They include Catherine Hummel, a writer from Australia. In July 2018, Hummel reached Bengaluru when she was deported by Indian authorities to Australia via Singapore. Indian authorities did not give her a clear explanation about why she was denied entry. In February 2018, a former Swiss diplomat, Kurt Vogeli, was detained by the Immigration Department upon his arrival in Ahmedabad. He was deported back to Geneva. In December 2017, Mukunda Raj Kattel, Director of the Regional Secretariat of the Asian Forum for Human Rights and Development, was detained by the Immigration Department upon his arrival in Tamil Nadu. He was deported back to Thailand via Malaysia. In June 2015, member of Greenpeace International Aaron Gray Block was denied entry into India. He was travelling to India on an Australian passport. He was deported back to Kuala Lumpur. In September 2014, Ben Hargraves, UK national working for Greenpeace International, was stopped by immigration officials at Delhi airport. He was deported back to London. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Deportations are done for a variety of reasons across the world, political causes being just one of them. More number of people are deported for being either convicted criminals or illegal immigrants. While deportation for political causes is not rare, countries across the world routinely deport foreign criminals, visa rule abusers and migrants. This has also consequently led to countries tightening their immigration laws. International law experts say that Australia has some of the toughest immigration laws. In six years, Australia deported 4,700 foreign criminals till 2019. Further, Australia, like many other countries, does not discriminate on returning refugees to countries where they are at risk of torture or inhuman punishment. 
In the UK, foreign criminals sentenced to at least 12 months in jail face mandatory deportation. The US makes exceptions for refugees who could have their freedom threatened or face torture in the countries they are deported to. The US has one of the highest rate of removals of unauthorized immigrants. Nearly 4 lakh people are deported from the US every year. Over the years, the US has invested heavily in manpower and detention capacity to detect illegal nationals. It has also expanded the use of administrative orders and laws to effect removals. Another country that has witnessed a sharp rise in deportations in recent years is Mexico. Many of the deportees are migrants heading to the US. The Mexican police deported 25,069 people in January and February this year alone. Most of them were Central Americans. A few hundreds are reportedly even Indians who were trying to cross into the United States. Extradition would only take place when a person has committed a crime in the host country but has fled to a foreign country and the foreign country is being uh, requested to return that person to face trial in the host country. So that is extradition and deportation is a host country, a, a country which is uh, where a foreigner has come and is staying could be uh, on an illegal basis, illegal immigrant or could be on a valid visa or on an expired visa. So it could be, uh, he could then be deported. Usually for a deportation, two things are needed. One is an administratively final order of removal that is also a deportation order. The other is a travel document issued by a foreign government. Issue of the travel document depends on the permission form of the deportee's country or a valid passport. Repatriation agreements determine permission from the deportee's country. Problems arise when nations refuse to take back their nationals when a country wants to deport them, in which case they would be sent to third countries. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV That's it from us on this edition of In-Depth. Thank you for your time.